Hello, this is the fifth video in the Managing Expectations series. I hope that you're getting a lot of value from these videos. They're produced to help you along your leadership journey and help you to get some real great tools to enable you to start that journey now and make a real difference in other people's lives as well as your own. Because that's the key thing about being a leader. It's not about you. It's about everyone around you and the impact that you have on them. Now, you know that Education Through Inspiration is on a mission to save the world from uninspiring leaders and poor communicators. And we know that you're joining us on that because we believe that you are going to be an inspiring leader. And we believe that inspiring leaders is what the world needs to move it to a far greater place. So these videos have been created for you to enable you to grab some of those skills and get a taste really of the skills in the program of the Kick-Ass Performance Workshops. So we really need to get very practical in what we're going to be doing in leadership. Today we're going to go through a tool that we use and we explore a lot in our Influence and Transform courses, which are number four and number five. And as I've mentioned before, transform, you'll go into transform once you've established all of the fundamental skills of the Kick-Ass Performance Workshops and you can demonstrate that you are putting them into practice and you are becoming an inspiring leader. So Transform is a huge program. It's not for the faint-hearted. And when you're in there, there is a high level of expectation that you'll get in there and you'll do a great job. But until you get there, we have communicate, we have confidence, we have influence, and then we have present. Those are our four, four fundamental videos. The first three are essential for any leader becoming a new generation leader. These are the people that are going to save the world. Today we're going to talk about getting smart. All right, and I've got my little green bear here because my little green bear helps me to plan. Because planning is not necessarily one of my greatest strengths. Strategic thinking and strategic planning and creativity, hell yeah. But actual practical planning, yeah. It kind of drives me a bit bonkers, but I know that it is so essential and I have to do it. So this is a skill that I've picked up and this is something that I've picked up that really helps me cement, I guess, my planning skill so that I can get great outcomes and great achievements because that's really what I want to be doing. All right, so let's talk about getting smart. So get smart. The first place that we want to start is RS, getting smart. What we want to do is think about the goals that we want to achieve. So if we think about a goal that we want to achieve or a project that we want to get done or something that just needs to happen, we can think about it in a smart way. And if you think about it in a smart way, it's going to help you get it done. And this is something that as a leader, you can help your people to work through. You can help your peers to work through. This is a skill for everyone. And it's really, really essential for great leaders. So S is the first place that we're going to start. And what does S stand for? Specific. Now, some of you may have learnt the SMART goal setting because you might have done some uh, interview planning or interview skills development uh, because you wanted to sit and interview and get the job and make sure you did it in exactly the right way. And they talked to you about having SMART responses or even STAR responses as well. There's a number of different ways. So hopefully this is a bit of a refresher for you. And if not, and if it's something new, that's awesome. So specific. 
So what you want to do is your project, your goal, whatever it might be, you want to be as specific as you can be. If you come up with a very airy-fairy kind of goal, then the human brain's got nothing to latch on to and it will let it go. That's just what happens. So if you say, oh, I really would like to lose weight, that's not a goal. That's not a specific goal. That's a wish, which is great, but it's not a goal. You need to be really, really specific in something like that. So the next one is obviously M. The M stands for measure. So our goal has to be measurable. So if we want to do something, and it might be I want to climb Mount Everest. So that might be my specific goal, all right? My specific goal is I want to climb Mount Everest. That's not enough, is it? We need to know when, where, how. How will I know when I've done that? What's going to be the, the, the steps along the way? All of those things. So because otherwise it's just a wish and we don't want to wish. We want goals and we want to get them done and we want achievements. So if you want to achieve the goal of climbing Mount Everest, we need some way of being able to measure that. And it can't just be, I've done it. Because there are a lot of steps along the way to climbing Mount Everest. So chunking it down into smaller, smaller goals would be great. So it might be, before I climb Mount Everest, I'm going to climb up the nearest mountain and I'm going to do it in under 20 minutes. So I'll know that I've done it well because I'll have hit the under 20 minutes. Being very measured and very specific. The next one... A is achieve. Our goal has to be achievable. So if our goal is to climb Mount Everest, yet we're 10, <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? You know, we're going to have to go through way too much to get our parents' permission. It's just not going to happen. It's not an achievable goal. But if we want to climb, climb Mount Everest and we're 25 and we're fit and we're healthy and we've got the finances to back us to be able to do that, then all of a sudden it's an achievable goal. We know when we're going to do it because we've been very specific we know what it's going to look like when we get there and we know that we can do it. It's achievable. Setting pie in the sky goals is all great, but they won't get done. We talk a lot in Transform about the difference between strategic thinking, strategic planning and action planning and getting things done. All three things are absolutely essential and they work together. What I'm talking about right now is the one here, the action-oriented one, so that you can get some stuff done and you can take this and translate it into your work straight away. The next one, if I can spell correctly, is R. <laughs> and the R stands for... Result. We want to make sure that we have a result from our goal. It's not okay just to have these goals where we go, oh, yeah, you know, it's going to be this, it's going to be that, and it's going to be all fabulous, and it's going to be wonderful. They have to actually have an outcome because what's the point in having them otherwise? If we're very result-oriented in our goal, then we'll be able to be specific. We'll be able to have a measurement. We'll be able to achieve it but we have to be result-oriented. Pie-in-the-sky goals, they just don't work. They might make us feel good. They might make us feel okay about ourselves because our pie-in-the-sky goal might be something that we've put on ourselves as far as an expectation is concerned or other people have put on us. But unless we can actually do it, it's not beneficial for us. Okay, so the last one is T, 
And can anybody think what T stands for in all of this? Time. There has to be a time limit to your goal. There has to be an achievement focus and an outcome that's going to happen at a specific time. So we have to put a timeline around it. So if we're going to climb Mount Everest and we're going to give ourselves a time frame to do that, then it's going to keep us on target, isn't it? So if we say, I'm going to climb Mount Everest next December, then I need to work back from next December on what I actually need to do. And that's where your action planning comes into it. I need to work backwards from that time. Because if I get to next November and I'm still sitting on my couch eating pizza, then I'm not climbing Mount Everest easily, am I? So if you're going to set a goal for yourself, you're going to set goals for others as well. Because as a leader, you will set goals for other people. You will give them or set them expectations. And you need to be really clear about that because you know what will happen? They won't know what to do. And if they don't know what to do, then their performance won't be as optimal as you want it to be. So to be a great leader, one of the essential skills for being a great leader is getting the best out of other people. And we explore that throughout our program how to get the best out of people. But first, I want you to get the best out of yourself because this is your career. This is your life. This is your goals. And this is something that will help you get there along the way. So potentially, let's think about your leadership journey as a goal. I want to be a CEO of a multinational company. Okay, that's pretty specific, isn't it? I want to be the CEO of a multinational company. All right, so the reason I, the measurement of that is I will be that CEO in these companies. So list out the companies, all right? So make it really, really specific and practical. These are the type of companies. So if I become a CEO of one of these companies, I know that I've got that goal. Right, so measured. Achievable. Is it actually achievable to, for you to be a CEO of a multinational company? It might be. I'm not going to say it's not. It's all up to you, isn't it? It's all up to you and your journey. But you need to have a plan along the way. And it might be that a step along that journey is to be a CEO of a local uh, SME. That might be part of your journey, or it might not be. It might be that you want to hit an executive level in a multinational company. You might want to enter in as a professional level at a multinational company so you can work your way up. Whatever your career journey is, whatever your leadership journey is, it needs to be planned and it needs to be strategic. You want to have a result and be result-oriented about this. So planning is really, really important to get those goals. And a time frame. When do you want to be the CEO? Is it by the time you're 60? Is it by the time you're 35? Is it in the next three years? Who knows? It's really about you setting that time frame for yourself and making it achievable. Part of the leadership journey that you're on is about looking very holistically about the world around you and where you are in that. Being able to plan your career is essential. Don't just dribble from one to the other. There's been many times where I've had someone say to me or I've said to others even, because I used to make these mistakes all the time in my leadership journey, is, oh, you know, jump into it, jump in the middle of it, fake it till you make it, it'll be all great. I'm here to tell you that just doesn't work. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, and the emotion that goes into it, and generally the, the learning that comes out of it comes from pain and suffering. 
So I want to help you on this journey. I want to take you there in a very strategic and planned and deliberate way that's going to let you reach your goal of being a CEO in a multinational company or an executive in a not-for-profit or to start your own business or to be an entrepreneur, whatever your leadership goal is, come with me. I can help you on that journey. I've got one more video for you in the Managing Expectations series, and that's about managing the expectations of other people and what they have for you. Now, this is a really hard one, but we'll talk about that in our next video. So thanks for joining me. Get smart. And until next time, be inspiring.